welcome to another photography tutorial. I'm professional wildlife photographer Paul Miguel and in this video I'm going to be talking about one of my favourite things which is how to use backlighting in wildlife photography. If you're not subscribed, then do consider subscribing to my channel for tutorials and also in the field photography. Now, you might not be too familiar with the technique of backlighting. If you're a beginner, you've probably been told to have the sun behind you or maybe slightly over one shoulder, which is good advice. Backlighting is pretty much the exact opposite of that. So rather than having the sun from behind you lighting up the subject, you're actually deliberately shooting towards the sun and towards the light. So it's a completely different form of lighting, but it's one of my favorites. And it just gives a lovely, lovely quality, can give a bit of atmosphere, and it can also help to outline the subject as well. So if you are backlighting, it means that you've got to be shooting towards the sun, which can create problems with lens flare. So one of the most important things is you make sure that you're using a lens hood. So like this, I've got a decent sized lens hood here, <laughs> there, and that's going to stop any lens flare, or should stop the majority of it for sure. Bigger lenses are really good for this type of photography because they tend to have very big lens hoods, which really helps a lot. So backlighting can work really, really well in wildlife photography and anything really that has a translucent quality to it is going to allow this technique to work for you. Uh, particularly birds, the feathers on the wings and the tails, they're going to allow the light to shine through and also mammals. So anything that's got fur or hair, again, it's going to have a similar effect. In that case, it's going to be a bit more of a halo effect and create more of an outline and also winged insects as well. So again, just having that translucent quality in the wings is going to allow the light to shine through. So it's a fantastic form of lighting and it's one that I absolutely love. But how do we get the correct exposures? And this is one of the trickiest things for a lot of people is getting an accurate exposure when backlighting. So I tend to approach this in a similar way to everything else really. And I'll still use aperture priority mode or fully manual mode to get the exposure that I'm after. Now, I do prefer to use evaluative metering as well. You could use center weighted, which might work okay in some situations. Um, also, you could try spot metering. The only problem with spot metering I find is if you're photographing wildlife, then it means you have to keep that focus point on the subject the entire time. And if it gets away from that focus point, then your exposure is going to be taken off something else and it can wildly change your exposure and it can be quite inaccurate. So I tend to go with the evaluative metering and then basically I'll assess the situation and I'll decide how much exposure compensation I need to give for me to get the correct exposure. What you need to remember is that a part of the subject is going to be much brighter than the rest of it. So the best example would be for your birds in flight, where the light is coming through the feathers, that area is going to be much brighter than the underside, which is still in shade. So you need to think about that when you're trying to judge the exposure. And a really good tool to use to help get the accurate exposure is to use the histogram. So I'd highly recommend that you look at the histogram. It's a really useful tool and particularly for this technique. Now the brightest areas, you generally want them to be close to the end of your histogram. So that's close to the right hand side. This is gonna vary a bit depending on the type of lighting. Now I find if it's softer light, you can often get away with a little bit more. So you could maybe push the histogram a bit further to the right. And in some occasions you could maybe slightly blow out the highlights on your image. But if it's very, very bright, sunny, where you get a lot of contrast, this is where you wanna pay the most attention to the end of your histogram. So in those conditions, you wanna make sure that the brightest parts of your histogram don't go off the end of the graph, because if they do, that means you've lost the detail. So in very, very bright conditions with lots of contrast, you wanna make sure that you keep the highlight detail by keeping the histogram within the range of the graph. Now I think the best way to do these kind of backlit photographs is to try and shoot towards a dark background. So I'll always make a real effort to try and find the darkest background that I can, preferably one that's some distance away. And what this does is just allow the subject to stand out, gives a really good contrast of the lit subject against the dark background, works brilliantly every time. Now this is a really common situation for me to shoot in, and in terms of the exposure, if you trust the exposure meter, 
i.e. it's in the middle on zero with no exposure compensation, then you're gonna get really overexposed pictures and they're just not gonna be good enough. You should expect the camera to look like it's underexposing in this situation. So if you're using aperture priority, um, if you leave it in the middle, it's gonna be overexposed. You need to deliberately underexpose. So it takes a bit of trial and error, but if you're shooting a backlit subject against a dark background, I'd suggest that you dial in probably minus one and a third exposure compensation. Now, if you're using manual, then the best way to do this is to take a test shot, and it's the technique that I prefer. So I'll take a test shot first, and then I'll adjust the exposure, trying to get the highlights close or near to the end of the histogram. If you look through the camera, it's gonna tell you that it's underexposed, but it will be pretty accurate. When I'm using backlighting, I do tend to still like to get a lot of detail in the shadow areas, but you can take it to the extremes. If you want, you can really, really underexpose and just concentrate on exposing for that highlight detail and throwing the rest into complete shadow. And in which case, you'd probably be underexposing by maybe three stops to get that effect. With the light coming from behind the subject, the other side of the subject is gonna be in shade. So this is a situation where a little bit of flash might actually work as well. So you could try a technique of filling flash with backlighting. Uh, with this, I would probably suggest that it, it works best in pretty strong lighting, in strong sunshine. So again, you could expose for the highlights to get them as you want, and then you could just use a touch of filling flash to fill in the shaded part of the subject. I'll put a link on the screen to the video I did on filling flash. Also, think about the surroundings of the subject, not just the subject itself. So if you're photographing anything on water, then you've instantly got potential for backlit water droplets, which in my opinion, it makes some of the best photos of anything. Um, um, also, snow, rain, sleet, all potentially gonna work well, backlighting to add to the image. So do bear in mind the surroundings and the weather as well. So if you haven't tried backlighting, do definitely give it a go, and don't be afraid to underexpose from what the camera tells you. Uh, I think backlighting, for me personally, is one of my favorite things. I absolutely love backlighting. I love the quality of the light, it adds atmosphere, and it can really make your pictures stand out. So I definitely do enjoy that. I'm gonna put a couple of videos up on the screen, so if you click one of these videos here, you're gonna get more information, tips and techniques to help you with your own nature photography. And if you're not subscribed, do click the subscribe button, and make sure you click the bell icon for notifications as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.